Cheers, guys. Epix 911, welcome to the Tuesday, January 31st, 2017 edition of VR News. I want to start off with a question I get asked from time to time. Epix, why don't you cover virtual reality Kickstarters? And the answer is pretty simple. Uh, first of all, I do. Not individual projects, but Kickstarter comes up. My first Kickstarter video was probably in 2014 when I talked about failed Kickstarters and Kickstarters that ended up scamming people. That was September 2014. And that's kind of, that kind of laid the foundation for why I don't talk about projects. That video right there would be probably the genesis. But even last week I talked about Kickstarter, mentioned a bunch of projects, said which I felt was the one most likely to succeed. And it seems it ended up being the least technological. It seems that the more technical, the greater the promise, the more likely they are to fail. Now, of course, there's 10 and $20 million examples of successes. But if I drove traffic, just one of you, to a site to pledge on a Kickstarter that then ends up scamming you, that would, that would piss me off. That would not be something I could live with. It's not something I want to have happen, and therefore, I don't. Now, if there truly is Kickstarter VR news, absolutely, I'm going to cover it. But individual projects, no. Succeed, come to market, then we'll talk. Then we'll look at it. Absolutely. So, there you go. Rightly or wrongly, that's my, uh, that's my reasoning. All right, let's start off news with iFixit. I love these guys. They are the ones that do just awesome teardowns of tech products. They don't care if there's hidden screws, pounds of glue, they're going to get inside. And what I always admire about them is these clutch fingers, and believe me, as an IT guy, I have a horrible track record destroying electronics because these are not fingers of finesse. Again, they are not. So what they're able to do that I can't, hey, I got to admire that, and I absolutely do. Not to mention, you get to see what's inside and what makes them tick. So the one they, they recently tore down was... This baby right here, the Oculus Touch Controller. Now, in the teardown, and I'll link that below, they also filmed a portion, I believe it was an infrared camera, and what's so cool is the LEDs, and there's LEDs, infrared ones, that go all around this circle. You don't see them with your eye. You see the logo, but you don't see those. They show up on the camera, and of course that was confirmed later when they got to that part is that there are essentially 22 infrared LEDs along this circle but on that video you actually see them glow and it looks pretty cool have a look but yeah copious amounts of glue holding this thing together lots of hidden screws the fact that they just do it without busting it like I said I admire that the rest for me is just all gravy and I love reading them and watching when they have videos. All right. A couple days ago, I think actually almost two weeks ago now, when I first talked about it, uh, the tracking improvements to Oculus Touch and kind of our conversation and theory has centered around it probably being mostly software. In other words, something that can be addressed because there were times it worked better and there were times where it worked worse. According to many of you, for example, that in early December, late November, well, early December, it was fine. And then subsequent updates, not so fine. So they announced today, they being Nate Mitchell, specifically from Oculus on Reddit, that the tracking was going to take a little longer. No details or reasons given. Suffice it to say, it will take some more time. So hopefully, I'm hoping by you know, mid to end February, that would be awesome. But you know what? If you're going to fix it, do it right. And nothing would be more frustrating than them to announce a fix and then stuff starts crashing or whatever, right? So, hey, if you got to beta test this Oculus, beta test the snot out of it, then launch it. 
I'm okay with that. And I'm sure most of you probably as well. All right, next news piece, a simple PlayStation Move mod that looks to be able to bring dual analog controls to the Sony Move controllers. And what's cool about this article, guys, in the video that I've also linked below is the fact, well, I guess the first cool thing is it's a Canadian company out of the city of Winnipeg. Uh, they're called Playhouse Studio. They released a video, and this is the other cool part, kind of before the whole VR craze in 2012, looking at features which, when you look at that same video now, seem to basically be designed strictly 100% for virtual reality, which wasn't the case at all. It was meant to just give flexibility and portray you, the gamer's hands, in-game. Do stuff like pointing gestures, thumbs up, the closed fist, all of that. They had a lot of that built in to their software. And the third cool thing about that is the fact that they basically created their own hybrid. So they put physically an analog controller and connected it to the move, to each move. So you kind of hold it. It looks like a Star Trek phaser, but very cool. Check out the video. They're dual shock style analog thumbsticks and buttons. Very cool. I would love something like that to come to market. The problem you're going to have, and we talked about this with the touch versus the Vive, for example, is when you don't have those favorable ratios one to one, it's going to be hard to convince devs to, you know, facilitate that control scheme. It's probably not going to happen. Uh, hopefully it does. And we get to see that because it definitely kind of puts the PlayStation VR controller wise more in the category and discussion place that Oculus and HTC are in. So very cool. Next news story. And the last uh, open VR their SDK that launched has initial support for OS 10 as well as DirectX 12. And this is really cool. This is based on the promised support for Mac users that uh, HTC talked about near the end of 2016, kind of those last few months. And they also hinted at some other things. Well, this looks to be the first step towards that. And they put all the usual disclaimers in the boilerplate, like use at your own risk. We may not extend this functionality beyond this build, etc., etc. But the fact that it's going to provide Mac OS 10 users with, you know, the ability to play, fantastic. And uh, I know they do have some AMDs. Obviously, you're going to need some hefty GPU. That's a whole other discussion, but this is a step in the right direction. So, guys, that's it for Tuesday. I have an arcade cab computer to rebuild because I want it faster, and then some VR. Hope you guys are having a kick-ass week so far. We are almost at hump day. Cheers, guys.